today's show. Is Harden cheating the game? Is KD a lock to sign with the Knicks? And can the Heat overcome Josh Richardson's injury? Before WrestleMania, we ask NBA players what their WWE persona would entail. And Bradley Beal definitely doesn't suck in this week's brand new edition of The Meme Team. It's Thursday, April 4th. The start starts now. Welcome to the Starters, presented by Jack Daniels, Old Number no. 7, and Tennessee Honey. I'm Jay Skeets, and alongside me, as always, Tass Mellis. We got the Aussie Lee Ellison over yonder. Well, that's the bearded one. That's Trey Kirby. Hey-o! Hey-o! Trey, what's up? Well, I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag the starters. And guys, last night, the Chicago Bulls got a win. But it didn't come easy because with 14 seconds remaining, Bulls center Cristiano Felicio didn't realize the game had restarted, leaving Chicago to play four on five before Felicio could sprint in, knock over his own guy, and foul a <laughs> Wizards player, sending him to the line for free throws. No idea how this happened. Felicio was apparently asked assistant coaches if they had a foul to give nope but it brings us to today's question what is the silliest nba brain fart this one's pretty good but it doesn't really hold a candle to jr smith dapping up bucks guard jason terry during play as the ball comes down the court pops over to say hi to his buddy quick back cut from tony snell for an easy dunk Still unbelievable, but this might not be the only time we're seeing J.R. Smith for silliest brain farts. Only time will tell, so send us your answers to hashtag the starters with your silliest NBA brain farts. We'll see the best ones later. All right, get your tweets in. On tonight's show, some NBA stars are going to get us uh, all hyped for WrestleMania this weekend. We got a brand new edition of the meme team. We got a very solid play. But we start with a little, is this news? Trey has rounded up those recent NBA headlines. He's going to pitch them to us like he's Steven Strasburg and we'll determine whether or not they're actually newsworthy. Trey. All right, our first headline is from the Houston Chronicle. Clippers commentator says James Harden is cheating the game. If you didn't hear it, take a listen to Clippers color guy, Don McClain. I just feel like, Rob, this style, what Harden does is manipulating the game somehow, like almost like cheating it somehow. And I don't really have a thought beyond that other than I'm watching something that isn't basketball. like. To me, basketball's player movement, ball movement, design plays, not just a guy walking it up and isolating every time. And I just feel like if, and that's why I brought up that point earlier, that who else could do this? It's not like he's, you know, it's not like within the system he's getting all these numbers. The system is built for him. James Harden is cheating the game. Is this news? I guess the news here is former player Don McClain doesn't like isolation basketball. It's so. a matter of taste. A lot of people don't like isolation yeah. basketball. I don't like metal music. It's still music. Right. James Harden's not cheating the game <laughs> in any way. He's playing within the rules. And I think Mike D'Antoni is doing this because this is the best situation for his team to win. I don't think – this goes against what Mike D'Antoni believes, too, similarly to Don McClain. But he's doing this because it's his best way of winning. Yeah. And you can ask – Don McClain can ask the question, is this how you can win a championship? Can you win a championship like this? I would say yes. He was very close last year. Chris Paul yeah. injury, maybe one of the best teams in the history of the planet isn't playing against them, maybe they win a championship. I think that's a, a fair question, yeah. but is he playing within the rules? Mm. Yeah. You play to your strengths. I mean, this is like Shaq in his prime. What was the, the Lakers' strategy? Just lob it into him and he would muscle guys out of the way. Shaq never developed a jump shot because he didn't need to, right. but he took advantage of his enormous size and strength and athleticism. And this is James Harden just doing the same thing on a, on a different scale to what Shaq's done and what Allen Iverson's done and what Jordan's done. And I think that that really is what Mike, Danny, Mike D'Antoni's doing that is smart. It's like, listen, no one can really stop you one-on-one. -on -one. You're our best player. You're our highest paid player. Go crazy. Yeah. Get us the wins. And they're going to get probably 50-plus wins here and get maybe second or third in the Western Conference and have a good chance of getting back to where they were last season. So you do it. It doesn't matter how pretty it is. It only matters how effective yeah. it is. Harden is the system when it comes to the Rockets. And like you're talking about, D'Antoni has realized that's our best bet to win some games here. Now, will it translate to playoff wins? At times we've seen Harden get tired and flame out a little bit, and we, that will, is left to be seen. But I'm just tired of this... I'm just tired of this argument when it comes to Harden, honestly. I think it's just sort of played out. And something sort of back to what you were saying, Tass, it's okay to admit that you don't like watching James Harden play. That's all right. But the whole manipulating and cheating, what are you, what are you talking mm. about? Like, I was never the biggest Paul Pierce fan watching him play basketball. Maybe even like a mellow type guy. Not my type of basketball. 
but I can still appreciate what he, what those two guys were doing and mm. how they were getting their buckets. It's still pretty incredible. This is not for me. I just don't get why he would just say, you know, not my cup of tea. Don't let it, don't really like it. And I also find it a little ironic that Don McClain is uh, throwing around the word cheating when he's talking about Harden cheating the game. When Don McClain was one of the first guys ever disciplined for using steroids in yeah. the NBA, mm. actually cheating. <laughs> so that's a, maybe a poor choice of words there on Don McClain. But yeah, yeah. No, otherwise this is not really news to me. Maybe he speaks from experience. <laughs> maybe he does. All right, Trey, what's our next headline? Uh, our next headline is Tass Mellis doesn't like metal music. That <laughs> comes from Guitar Player hey, Online. Yeah. What a shocker. Our next headline comes from Bleacher Report. Rick Buecher says that Kevin Durant signing with the Knicks is done. Is this news or should I lock it in? No, no, well, no. this would be news if it was done already. But, yeah. uh, there's but no this, is, way. this is not news because no. we've been hearing these rumors mm. for months now, right? That, that KD has his eye on going to the Big Apple, going to New York. No matter what happens with yeah. the Warriors this year, if they three-peat with him there, if he wins another Finals MVP, he's already made his mind up. But mm. So it's not news that now Rick Buecher, I think, is saying it's a done deal, at least to me. <laughs> Well, no. yeah, he, in my mind, there's no way he's leaving Golden State if they win three in a row. To have that see, I disagree with that. Yeah, but see, listen, well, he, could, he potentially has a chance to do something that Kobe didn't do, Shaq didn't do, Michael didn't do, Larry Bird didn't do, to win four in a row. There's no way you walk away from that situation. You're in this league to win as many championships as you can. And if he's got an opportunity to win four, why on earth would he want to leave? Even though it hasn't been great these last couple of years there and he's been feuding with the media, Ultimately, it's about winning championships, and I just don't see why he would leave that situation. If the Warriors don't win it this year, then it's like, okay, well, who cares? He's not going to—he's not trying for three or four in a row, and he can then leave. But I just think when you have that sort of situation presented to you, you would be mad to walk away from it. I think what Rick Buecher said was interesting overall, where he talked about Steph Curry being the face of the franchise and how KD hasn't had that. This was his full quote. Kevin Durant has never been fully embraced by the Warriors faithful and has never, even from a national perspective, been given the just due that you would expect for a guy who has been the MVP or the NBA Finals MVP of their last two championships. It's still Steph's team. That's true. Yeah, but he knew That's that. That's 100% he, true. He knew that going to Golden State. What, did he think he would just become the face of the franchise when that guy was almost the face of the NBA? after they won a championship, Kevin Durant knew he wasn't going to be the face of the team. Maybe not the he face of the team. He, he thought he might get a little more respect, again, for winning titles and winning finals. Uh, but, but, yeah, but he doesn't. The, but the but he doesn't. Yeah, he knew, but he doesn't because he knew he was going to be a villain. He went to the team that beat him. Yeah. He knew that he wasn't going to get respect from fans overall, but he doesn't care. He, get, he knows that the guys in that locker room love him, and that's all he cares about. So to me, he's not leaving because Steph Curry is the bigger face of the team. That, that, okay, that, that well, doesn't could you play agree? Maybe he goes to New York for another challenge in his basketball career. Okay. Maybe that's, that's possible, a, maybe yeah. that's yeah, you yeah. Know, he sees that and you know whether like look the Knicks haven't been to the conference finals since what like 2000 so any success in New York mm -hmm. and obviously he's going to be a big deal and people are going to love Kevin Durant you know the New York faithful are going to love him if he gets any sort of playoff success and that would just be a new challenge I think it's I've always believed maybe. that he is going to go to New York and he's going to leave the Warriors no matter what happens mm. so again I'm just sort of I'm agreeing with guys like Bill Simmons and Rick Buecher and a whole bunch of other people who say yeah they're, they're sort of it, the writing's on the wall and maybe it's been the writing on the wall for a little while now that he looks like he's going to make his yeah, way but, I but he doesn't he doesn't care about the outside perception that it is Steph's team because he didn't care about the yeah, outside okay. perception when he went to the Golden State Warriors and was the NBA's sure. villain I think that's clear Kevin Durant doesn't give a flying poop what fans think about him and his game. Okay. He's an MVP. He's a two-time finals MVP. Done. Period. He has cared before what people think yeah, sure. about him. Yeah, sure. Whether sure. But, he, but he knew what he was getting into yeah. when he went to Golden State. The difference there is whether they like him or respect him. And people might not like him, but everyone respects him and what he does for the game. There's no doubt about that. There's no one out there saying, well, he's overrated or he shouldn't be in the MVP conversation because that's a completely different uh, argument versus whether or not you like him for joining a 73-9 team. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, what, what he's sort of wrestling with at the moment. It's like he wants to be respected and liked, but he probably can't get that in Golden State. But still, if I was him, who cares? He's winning championships. That's what it's all about. So just to get our Buker on here, you think he stays if they win another title? Yes. Otherwise, you maybe see him leaving? If, if they don't win, then yes, he what, can go. What's your gut say, Taz? If you had to guess? Uh, I, I'd say Golden State, probably. You think so? Yeah, okay. that's, a very, that's a guess. Capital yeah. G. All right, well, I think he's leaving. <laughs> maybe I'm trying to talk it into existence as well. Maybe some of these other guys are, too. We want him to leave the Warriors that's and make fair. things a little more interesting. All right, final headline. Trey. I think he's leaving, too. I actually heard it was done. Our final headline <laughs> is from ESPN. It reads, sources say the Heat's Josh Richardson could miss two weeks with a groin injury. Is this news? This, this is oh, news. Yeah. This is bad news. This is bad, yeah. bad timing here. 
for the Miami Heat. He just came back from three game absence. He had, a, he had a heel injury. Now he's got this groin injury. Sounds like he could miss a couple weeks. Obviously not much time left here in the regular season as the Heat try and get into the playoffs, which by the way, they fell out of last night. Yeah. They lost the Celtics, the Magic beat the Knicks, and now suddenly the Heat are in the ninth spot. And you know, you look at their schedule in the remaining games, not going to be easy. And you'd like to have one of your better guys in Josh Richardson. So this is tough news. What could help them though is uh, playing the Wolves. They're not going to make the playoffs. So maybe they rest one or two of their guys. The Raptors as well, they're not going to move. Maybe they rest a yeah. guy or two. And the Six is the same. Their only game is against New Jersey, uh, New Jersey, Brooklyn, who might actually be still playing. For Too much Don so. McLean. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think we could have a situation next Wednesday where that Nets Heat game decides who gets into the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. It could be similar to what happened last year yeah. between the Nuggets and the Wolves. Uh, it's like, you win, you're in. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but Josh Richardson, I mean, he, you, you sort of don't necessarily notice what he does, but his impact yeah. on that team is is probably the most impactful player, actually, on that team. Maybe Dwayne Wade, of course, but uh, they're, they're certainly not going to be able to replace him, I don't think. Josh Justice Winslow's come back, different sort of role player. But, uh, yeah, this is going to be a tough one for Miami with four games to go. Yeah, even if they make it into the postseason, mm. he would be out for the first few games yeah, right. uh, because of this injury, and that hurts big time. This is a guy that they didn't include in Jimmy Butler talks reportedly because he's that good, because he's got a lot of tools mm. in the toolkit. And yeah, maybe you don't notice everything he does on the basketball floor, but he's a, he's a very solid guy. He's not a number one scorer quite yet in the league. Classic um, Heat player, you know, scrappy, tough, does what he's supposed to do, yeah. but doesn't have those huge uh, box score numbers. Or but the team like is better. You look, you know, you dive into the, the points per 100 possessions. They're better when oh, he's out there than when, he's on, when yeah. he's on the bench. So, yeah, this is a tough loss. Magic are happy. They got the win last night. They're looking a little bit better. And, I mean, this is still a race here in this Eastern Conference with the Nets and the Pistons. And then these two teams, Hornets are holding on for dear life. I think they're a little too far <laughs> back. But, yeah, it's exciting stuff. All right. Agree or disagree? Any of that news? Let us know on Twitter. Hashtag the starters when we come back. We got a brand new edition of the meme team. Fix up, look sharp. Don't go anywhere. The starters is presented by Jack Daniels Old Number no. 7 and Tennessee Honey. Every week. We scour the internet to bring you the meme team, our favorite weird and wacky moments from the NBA world. At number five, the Atlanta Hawks are the office. The office is the Atlanta Hawks. Shout out to the Hawks social media team. Love that show, and Michael Scott, well, he loves the Hawks. Here he is showing the team Trey Young's game winner versus Philly. Turner looks, plays it into Trey. Two seconds stop. one, Trey Slover. Yes! With point one, and the Hawks are going to win this game. Last weekend in Miami, Shaq hit the Ultra Music Festival for some sweet EDM. <laughs> Big Diesel loving the vibe. Hopped into the mosh pit, started throwing his weight around. <laughs> Yahoo Sports saw some similarities to how teams tried to guard Shaq in his prime. Yeah. I wish, wish Chris Dudley was in the mosh pit yeah. there. <laughs> that could body him. At number three, this is men just really enjoying each other's company, like Mitchell Robinson and DeAndre Jordan. Playing. <laughs> it's one of the most ticklish spots on the human yeah. body. Oh, yeah, it makes you jump. Uh, or Kyle Kuzma helping LeBron get bejeweled before the game. <laughs> I trust Kuzma. He likes to look good. He's going to hook you up. Or DJ is back here helping Mario Hazonia keep that hair tight. <laughs> okay, nice. Oh, oh, a little oh, lick. Ah, yeah. At oh. number two, the Thunder recently became the last team in the league to get a jersey sponsorship. And as a result, the team had to take new headshots with that loves patch there, which is why we got this Russell Westbrook photo of him holding a piece of paper that said Russell Westbrook. And people got to meme it. Well, just had a 20-20-21 game. That's nice. his Wilt-like photo. Yeah. Shout out to Nipsey Hustle. Rest in peace. Some lyrics there. This is a favorite. Best picture goes to Moonlight. <laughs> just mm -hmm. creepy. You're entering the triple-double zone. Even creepier, oh, Lee's photo yeah. drawing. I like that one. Nice. And uh, my favorite, Westbrook, a piece of paper. Good photo. 
But at number one, it's Bradley Beal. When a Lakers fan told Beal he sucked, he responded by saying, I suck, in striking this memorable and meme-worthy <laughs> pose. When people say, oh, man. When people say trade John Wall, yeah, you gotta strike that pose. Mm -hmm. Or when people say Lakers should trade Brandon Ingram and Lonzo Ball for Beal. The good thing is, Beal's just using it all the time now. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be a celebration. Yeah. Oh, he's gotta keep doing it. It's a game winning three. Exactly. He's dropping in the double teapot pose. All right, when we come back, NBA stars step into the squared circle, get us all fired up for WrestleMania. Welcome back to the starters. It's WrestleMania 35 this Sunday, live from New Jersey. And so to get ready and get excited for the granddaddy of them all, we asked some NBA stars what their wrestling name would be if they were to step into the squared circle. If you were a pro wrestler, what would your wrestling name be? My wrestling name, that's a hell of a question. Uh, probably the Green Ranger. Something like intimidating, like the executioner or something like that. I'm probably say something that uh, D'Angelo always says when he sees me, probably Cat Daddy or something like Cat that. Daddy, and he always follows me that. And he sings it every single time. How does he sing it? What do you mean? Wait, he always hits me with the Cat Daddy. That's your theme song, I love <laughs> right? It. Cat Daddy. Yeah. Uh, Rakishi Jr. OK, why is that? You don't know who Rakishi yeah, is? I remember Rakishi. He's oh, a big okay. boy. He's huge, though. Oh, I don't know. I just like him. He's good. What would yeah. your finishing move be? I'm not putting my butt in nobody's face, though. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Big Panda. What would your finishing move be? Ooh, I would probably just, like, roll around or something. That's what pandas do. <laughs> or the claw or something, whatever the fans. I'll let the fans choose my name. The Montenegrin. Monster. Monster or bear. You could have a finishing move, maybe the the claw. The claw yeah, I have big hands. Wrestling is, I don't know, I used to watch when I was little, but that's, that sport is different. That's too much, there's way too much contact in that sport. They get hit with chairs and throwing through tables. I don't got time for all that. I don't got time for all that. The pineapple, something like that. Rough on outside, but sweet inside, I don't know. Yeah. The prickler could be your finishing. Oh, the prickler, that'd be, that, you know what, the pineapple, I'm the prickler. The pineapple prickler. <laughs> Can I take somebody's name? You know what they Sure, man. They take somebody's name. Um, I call myself Flash Flair. <laughs> Can you hit me with a woo? Yeah. <clears throat> woo! Woo! I was the horse from karaoke the other night. <laughs> Wade coming through with the woo. Love Kyle Lowry's answer, too. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. But let's play a little fill-in-the-blank fun here, just really quickly off of this. It's the WrestleMania edition. It's for you guys. And play along on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Guys, fill-in-the-blank. Your wrestler name would be blank. What are you going with? I'm going with the Greek Freak. Mm. I'd, have to, I'd have to get jacked. Naturally, of course, not Don McLean stuff. Uh, <laughs> you know, the WWE loves playing up the nationalities, the background yep. of, of guys. And uh, it's Giannis's, maybe he's patented it, but I could start a rivalry That's with him. That's right. Ooh, get like him that. in the ring. The Battle of the Greeks. Yeah, sort of following along that, I'm the Thunder from Down Under. Of course. I mean, you know, you've already sort of seen me pose as well as the thunder from down Oh, under. yeah, you took your shirt off for one time and had your pose. <laughs> That's from... right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I actually didn't know we had this photo like ready far, to go. Like a farmer from down under. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that photo. Yeah, that was as soon as we arrived in Vegas, too. There was no So if you were a wrestler, would you have, like, six other guys that come out there? Of course I would, yeah. <laughs> Just wearing jeans? <laughs> yeah, that's nice, all it. That's it, man. All right, Trey. I'm going with T-K-O. The T stands for Trey. The K stands for Kirby. The O stands for, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got all kinds of moves. The curb stomp, my go-to move. Nice. My finishing oh. move, however, the sea ball season off the top ropes. Maybe in the, the winter time, I go for a, a Christmas character, young Santa. Maybe another persona, the southern lawyer. We got ourselves a man. You should yeah, rub, you guys... rub your beard in someone's face as well. That's right. I want to go Mick Foley with it, play a whole bunch of different people. You guys put some thought into this. Yeah. I really, Can't really wait for WrestleMania. It. All right, let's hear from you guys. Again, jump on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Fill in the blank there. What would your wrestler name be? Let us know when we come back. The Thunder from Down Under and six topless <laughs> men hit us with the very solid <laughs> Gotta oil you up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love 
Love that music. Tonight on TNT, we got a doubleheader. Bucks versus the 76ers starting at 8 p.m. Eastern, followed by the Warriors and Lakers. Enjoy the doubleheader, guys. All right, we asked you, what's the silliest NBA brain fart that you can think of. You hit us up on the Twitter machine, hashtag the starters. Trey got some answers. Yeah, some good ones. We started with the Bulls not being able to count. Here's another time they weren't able to count. This time they put five guys on the floor, forgot the inbounder, whoops. Also a great brain fart. Otto <laughs> Porter freezing in the corner again against the Bulls. How about the time Michael Beasley wore the wrong shorts to a game earlier this year, <laughs> also earlier this year. P.J. Tucker forgetting to catch the ball on an inbounds play, but the most submitted by far. JR yep. Game one gaff from last year's finals. That was last year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was less than 12 months ago. <laughs> Just like an eternity ago. All right, tomorrow, Trey pays off his March Pick'em loss. We have finally figured out what you're going to be doing, Trey. And I, I don't want to give it away, but in a weird way, you came up with this idea and you don't even know it. Oh, I am very smart. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how it goes tomorrow with that pick and payoff. All right, Lili, very solid play. Yeah, we're going out to uh, Denver here for one that's uh, maybe not the uh, smoothest solid play of all time, but it's still solid because look at this save. Whoa, and what is going on? Yeah, this, I is, know. this is too crazy. Yeah, it's not very yeah. solid at all. This is not nah, solid. Come on, come on. Well, look, look, everyone's getting involved. Everyone touches the ball. That's nearly one guy almost out of bounds, another guy out of bounds. But he saves that and gets a high percentage play. That's what I call <laughs> a very solid play. <laughs> I just wanted to see how awkward it would get. It was pretty awkward yesterday. It was even more awkward today. All right, tomorrow, it's Friday. We got the Starters Drop Podcast for you. Make sure you subscribe to the Starters Drop Podcast or the podcast in general, wherever you do. We'll get it up as soon as possible. Here's what we're doing on tomorrow's Drop Podcast, right? We're picking our all-NBA teams, mm -hmm. maybe get into the all-rookie teams, maybe the all-defensive teams, and of course, we'll step on the beach. So get your questions in right now, hashtag the starters, or email us, the starters at NBA.com. Otherwise, we'll be back here at 6 p.m. All right, thanks for joining us, folks. And remember, <laughs> look how happy he is. <laughs> <laughs> Embrace the night, people. <laughs>